OK, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, we are very excited to be a part of this symposium and, of course, have uh, the opportunity to present our project uh, that we have been working on for quite some time now. I think it was three years mm. from now. Oh, really? And yeah, what is the topic? Um, in a Latin font, when you open a normal text editor, you have like millions of different fonts that, can, that you can choose from, like Helvetica, Arial, Times New Roman. But uh, in sign writing, there's so far only one font. So our idea was, why not have an, a second alternative font for sign writing that you can choose between the two alternatives? And today we want to share our experiences and uh, our ideas designing that font. But uh, first, we should introduce ourselves. Um, I will start. Um, as uh, Valerie already said, uh, I'm Joachim Nitschke. I'm, uh, oh, my sign name is uh, Jo. It comes from my uh, short name, which is Jo. Um, yeah. I'm a software developer from Hamburg, Germany. So I studied computer science. And uh, during that, as a hobby, I uh, started to learn German sign language. And uh, doing that, I, uh, during my studies, I got in contact with Delex, uh, the, the team that built uh, the software uh, Stefan presented two days ago. And I worked there for four, four years as a software developer. So I'm actually one of the guys uh, who built that software Stefan uh, presented to us. And uh, in Delex, uh, our idea was the, to build a writing software for sign writing that you can use as easily as, for example, Microsoft Word, uh, where you can write texts and uh, lay out them. And uh, as I already said, in Word, you can choose between many different fonts. And uh, yeah, we have here, uh, during that time I worked, and we had the idea that it would be nice to also have a font to font for sign writing. And with that idea in mind, I uh, met Janina and Paul, um, and then we decided to, to try to design a new font. Yeah, okay. we do are uh, communication designer, and uh, Maybe you get in the middle now. No, yeah. all, now we are all ah, okay. in the screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's good actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul and I are communication designer, and uh, when we met Jo, it was um, he was presenting us the idea, and usually in our studies uh, we we design Latin fonts. So this idea was very special for you, and we we wanted to be part of this opportunity to be part of this um, idea, which is like in the baby shoes right now, and uh, <laughs> a very special opportunity, and we wanted to do it, to try it. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm Paul, and uh, Janina and I were basically studying or doing the same. We're both graphic designers, and um, to start our presentation, uh, we want to show you one part of our design process, which was really interesting, because working together with Delex was always pretty special, because we couldn't say if it works, really, because we are like peering people. So we always had to check with Delex if our ideas actually can uh, work. And um, I think. Um, to start with, we show a video of Timo, who is a member of Delex. Um, he's a deaf teacher, and um, he will like say a few things about our yeah. design work together with them. So now's the uh, point where we should um, make the other screen big. And yes. here's. So Adam is showing this video. Okay. Yes. okay. And uh, here you can see a picture of our working process, but I'm changing the screen to the video now. So, um, this is Timo. Can you see him? Yes, I can. Adam, you have him front and center, right? Yeah. Oh, look at the sign name on the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to note that he's, he speaks usually 
German uh, sign language, but he also has experience in, in, in ASL and he tried to use ASL. But he already told us that he um, he made some mistakes. But so <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, I'm uh, yes. I'm going to show it now. <laughs> so he also introduces himself. You know, he tells us that he wanted to support our idea.
<clears throat> okay. Um, was it was it uh, understandable? Could you could you uh, could you see it now? Yes. I. How did you feel, Adam? Adam's a native into ASL. Could yeah, you understand? Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> What was for us at Delex was so so important that uh, sign writing is such a such a strong tool to show different languages in comparison, uh, which helps us at Delex a lot to teach people uh, the spoken language and the grammar of the spoken language. Um, and um, yeah, what Timo said is that. Um, in, in Delex, we, have, we get, uh, get a lot in contact with people who don't know sign writing, and they first have to learn it to use it during the lessons. Um, uh, so um, one of our goals, we will come to that later, was to, to um, make a font that is very easy, understandable for people who don't know sign writing uh, in, the first, in the first place. But we will come to that later. Um, to give you a first impression of uh, what we have done during our project, um, this is what we have done. So this is uh, this are the symbols uh, we we designed during the, the last the last years. And um, of course, sign writing has such a huge number of symbols, so it is uh, quite a, a big task to make a new font for that because there are so many symbols. So we ask ourselves where to start. And uh, we thought that, uh, of course, the hands are the most important part uh, when signing. So we wanted to start with that. And of course, there are still a lot of hand symbols. So we, uh, we agreed in the end on the, to, to realize a new design for the, for the 60 most used uh, hand symbols in German sign language. And this, is, uh, this here is the result. And now, um, Paul and Janina will tell us how we got there. Yeah, okay, first of all, um, <clears throat> um, I want to, to give you guys an insight on how, um, on how we work like um, during our design process so that it's easier to understand the decisions we made for the uh, sign writing alphabet and uh, why we did what we did basically. <laughs> um, yeah. We study communication design, and one part of our studies is type design, which is basically how to design a font, in our case, for the Latin alphabet. And um, you know, you, as you can see on the picture, there's many, many different fonts, and there's many, many different styles. And you can maybe choose a font which is maybe a little bit childish, or a font which is very elegant. Um, but there's also fonts which are pretty neutral and pretty geometric. And um, for us, it was pretty clear that we wanted to make a font for the sign writing alphabet, which is really clear and really straight. And um, yeah, that was like one of the first decisions uh, we made. Like, um, Designing a font is like looking very, very closely on every single letter of the alphabet. So we have a program and we take really tiny decisions that usual people probably won't see, but which are really, really important for us to make um, letters that fit together well. And they make like a very nice appearance, like not by itself, but also in that font family. Like that there is certain rules to that font which are applied to every single letter, so everything together looks nice as well. Yeah, and um, when you start designing a font, there's only a very few base shapes, which are the rectangle, the triangle, and the circle. And um, you can make pretty much every letter out of these very basic shapes. And um, this is how it looks. For example, in this font, um, this is a font which is very geometric, so it's very close to these base shapes. And uh, for us, it was like the first or the starting point was to look what are the base shapes in sign language. Yes, and of course, you know, um, the base shapes in sign writing um, 
how it is, exists now is the square or rectangle, the house as we call it, I hope it's okay that we call it house, <laughs> and the circle. So um, here we marked the base shapes on the actual hands. And um, these are the results of the base shapes in the actual sign. Uh, yeah, signs. They are very simple. They are very simple elements. They look uniform and they are easy to write. And um, as we already uh, mentioned, in designing a Latin font, um, you start with the base shape, and then you can systematically um, use this base shape to apply it on others that um, look have have the same base shape. In this case, it's the O, the G and the C, for example. And so you can go on step by step to form other signs out of one base shape. And we applied this system on, um, on the design of our sign writing font. For the circle, it, were, it was this procedure. The fingers uh, differ, but the base shape stays the same. And this is it for the house, and this is it for the square. And they represent the hands that you see down there. Yeah, and then there are um, more complex signs. In the Latin alphabet, these are the H, or this, you can see, I mark it, I mark it now. If the, you can see it on the left, this is a base shape where you can um, build others from. And in sign writing, these would be these. Yeah, in, in Latin script, you always look for groups of characters that are based on the same basic shape. And we did also did this for, for sign writing. And uh, started with the base shapes, and now there are also more complex uh, shapes in sign writing. Not every sign writing character can be made of the square, the circle, and the, the house shape. For some, some more complex. Yeah. Yeah, you always try to find one com a component that can be used for similar signs. Yeah. Mm, and as you can see, um, wait a second, they already look um, consistent. Um, this is because of the base shape, but you also apply another tool that is used in um, designing in Latin font, and this is um, the guidelines. Um, they make sure that every sign has the same height, and um, yeah, they constitute the shape of every sign too. Um, combining all these components or these aspects, we created a grid, and um, for with this grid, you can um, basically. Um, form every other sign that is existing in sign writing. You can just add the fingers and um, they all have the same position and um, it is a tool we built that uh, you can use now to create all symbols in sign writing. Yeah, the idea was not to directly start uh, designing the symbols but to first find, find a grid that can be used as a template. Yeah. For every for every uh, future symbol to design. So, so like as the Appam said in the beginning, we took like 60 like the 60 hands which are m used uh, mo the most often. But with this um, grid we made, you can basically design pretty much every hand you would need. So these uh, 60 hand was such a big variety that we could find rules that could can now be like pretty much. Uh, put onto every other hand you could possibly think of. <laughs> yeah, and um, so in general, I can summar summary it a little bit. Um, our um, goal was to equal the stroke thickness, to um, equal the base shapes, and to equal the positions of the fingers. So, and this is how it would look, like we earlier saw. Um, when applying all the all these rules we create um, to to the symbols we already designed, and as you can see, 
now that we look at all together, they, um, they seem to be consistent. They seem, they appear uniform already. Yeah, and to show that a little bit uh, more in detail, we show you some examples from the existing fund, which um, you can use now, and from our fund, uh, where we try to apply these rules, where, um, uh, how yeah, we was, was talking about. And on this picture, you can see that there were like different houses, but um, <laughs> we decided um, that for us, um, it would make sense to have only one house because the font looks then more consistent in itself. May I, may I say one thing? Um, I think everybody should know when they say house, they mean the flat hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, because a house is a concept, and that would be a sign. Like an, Amer an American sign language, a house would be signed in a certain way. And it's true that the, the sign for house does use the flat hand. That's true. But we call that the flat hand. I think we should say that so that everybody knows. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for mentioning it because we thought about that, like preparing the presentation. Oh, I see. We use it so long that it's kind of stuck in our heads. Uh, of course. We, we have our names too. You know how it is. We've all been working in different projects over so many years. But please go ahead. Please okay. go ahead. Yeah, now this would be the example for the flat hand that we introduced like pretty much one flat hand symbol and not um, many different ones. And another example would be um, like stroke thickness. You can maybe switch one further. Um, where you can see that we wanted to make a very clear and geometric font and we decided to use only one stroke thickness so that every symbol has the same basic look and it fits together well. And on the left hand side you can see yeah, Oh sorry. <laughs> on the left hand side you can see that um, there is different um, stroke thicknesses, but not all of them um, are really important. So we try to see like which ones are important, which have a meaning and which are maybe not so um, so obvious why they are thinner or thicker or if it's really like necessary and um, we like we have been told that there is very much meaning to every like thing pretty much used but we thought about for us what maybe can be made a little bit easier so the font looks a little bit nicer and it's still working so yeah but this is um, was a very close dialogue with the Delex team, so we <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. Well, um, if you're just working with one sign language and they are um, writing signs that deaf people already know really well within German sign language, let's say, um, people can start memorizing almost anything, just as long as they know that represents a certain concept. Um, but if you're dealing with the international world, you get into a real issue here with what you have there. So I think what you're saying is you're getting it down for the German sign language, is that correct? Yes, yeah. but, 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 but we're going to talk about that, like differences and everything a little bit later, I guess. Okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, we have some more examples, I think, or like everything at once, like maybe one further. Yeah, they could see like that um, it looks like to us a lot different, maybe to someone who's not that close into it, maybe just a little bit, but um, it becomes more like one font which like is uh, from the outward appearance uh, is closer together from the single letters than the the one we, we saw before. Yeah, we wanted to make a, a font that has a very consistent style, so where Every character is, uh, looks the same from the style perspective. Yes. That is why uh, we, we work so, uh, for us, stroke thickness and shapes were so important to have them unified. I see. It's beautiful. Very nice. OK, and uh, um, when we, uh, as said before, we discussed a lot uh, with the Delex team. Uh, uh, and uh, showed our work regularly to them to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to get feedback from them. And uh, especially what was very helpful was we worked a lot with Stefan Wormann because uh, 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 he was, he's an, a very experienced reader and of course it's for us important too to, to get the opinion of an experienced reader in, in sign writing. And one problem uh, we always have to solve during this, this discussions is um, 
how much can we actually change a symbol but uh, still maintain the readability? Um, and uh, which leads uh, in the end to the question, uh, what, deter what actually determines readability uh, in sign writing? And um, when we take a look at Latin fonts, um, for example, here you have different uh, versions of the capital letter A. And uh, as, you, as you see, some are pretty, can be read pretty well. Uh, others may be a little less, but all, uh, all together, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite OK to read them. And um, most, no, no. Oh, sorry. Um, most, uh, uh, most fonts uh, only change the letters uh, in a small way. And uh, they still maintain the base shape uh, of the letter. But in some cases, for example, if you look at the, uh, at the small uh, letter A, uh, there's not only a difference in the, uh, in, the, in the style, but also there are also difference in the, in the basic shape. Um, so for example, when, actually when I was in primary school and learned reading, uh, I learned the letter on the right, uh, the, the small A, and when I first saw the other versions that is used by the fonts on the left, I couldn't read it at first. <laughs> so someone yeah. had to tell me this is also an A. And then I learned it, and now, of course, uh, I can read both versions. Uh, probably I, I uh, don't really recognize it by reading which version is used. But uh, at the beginning, I had to explicitly learn it. And that is, uh, from that we learned that uh, in, in uh, Latin script, uh, readability is something you have to learn. It's, uh, you can read best what you know best. It's, yes. it's a process of training, and you get used to the shape, and then you can read it very well. Um, and of course, this is, um, this is because uh, the, the form of the letter uh, has no visual relation to anything. So uh, the, the question is, why does the A look like an A? It's, there's no uh, relation to the real world, because it represents the spoken language, and the sound is not a visual thing. It's nothing you can see. So uh, it's just a, a convention that the A looks like this. Yes. Uh, of course, it has developed over time, but uh, now there's no uh, no visual relation anymore. So you have no choice but to learn it. So that's an A. But in sign writing, uh, on the contrary, uh, there is a very strong relation between the language, a very strong visual relation between the language uh, and the and the um, the symbols, because the symbol just looks like the hand. Um, so um, yeah, due to the fact that the sign language already is a visual uh, language. And uh, so in sign language, uh, in addition to, uh, to, uh, to the fact that uh, you can learn readability, there's also the fact that readability comes from iconicity. So you can, uh, you can read uh, the, those letters best that uh, looks very uh, similar to the real to the real sign or the real hand while signing. And um, so far, we have only presented symbols that uh, where we made uh, smaller um, adjustments in shape and stroke thickness. And uh, now we want to uh, also show you some uh, examples of letters where we. Um, made a little bit uh, larger uh, changes, um, f uh, which the goal, our goal was to um, improve the iconicity there. Um, OK, the first symbol. Janina oh. <laughs> already um, switched the slides. Um, is the, the hand with the five fingers spread. And uh, the original symbol in sign writing is based on the shape of the flat hand. And um, uh, we learned from Stefan uh, when we discussed with him that this is that this comes from from a certain rule that says uh, if no finger is touching the palm of the hand, then the symbol is based on 
on the symbol from the flat hand. So what we call the house. Um, and um, but, uh, in, in, as, as we heard before in Delex, there are a lot of people that, uh, that are very new to sign writing. So we have a lot of sign writing beginners there. And uh, from them we heard that this, for them this is a little bit uh, irritating because they don't know this rule. They only <laughs> see the symbol. And for them, uh, uh, the, the aspect I, I talked about before, the iconicity, is more important to learn the, uh, the symbol than, uh, than, than the rules that it's based on. So uh, we also made a version uh, that's based on the square, of course, breaking with the rules. Um, but uh, having a version that is maybe easier to learn for uh, for um, for sign writing beginners, because in, in our opinion or in the opinion of our uh, colleagues at Delex, it more looks like like the actual hand. And another example is uh, this hand. So it's almost the same, but only with a middle finger pointing towards you. <laughs> Uh, there also we had a maybe different idea um, we wanted to show you um, in the original hand uh, the the symbol uh, is based on the perspective from the side so uh, you look at the hand from the side and that's why the symbol looks like that and we made a version that is based uh, on the perspective the most other symbols are based on and uh, used the dot. Uh, which was also used in other symbols to yes. display the finger that is pointing towards you. May I just ask a quick question? Are you going to be touching upon palm facing later? Oh, no. 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 Okay. Very good. Yeah, we, we, actually, we also did the other versions, like the rotations. Uh -huh. And we'll do that uh, in, a, in a second. All right. Very good. <laughs> So um, and here again, we as the the Delex team told us that this is uh, uh, more uh, easy to learn. But of course, uh, when we discussed with Stefan, he told us that this is for him as an experienced reader it is irritating because <laughs> he of course has learned and memorized the the symbol, the original symbol, and now when we change it that drastically, for him uh, it's not that easy to read. So that was. It was uh, for for us actually the most challenging part of our work of uh, that we always had to find this uh, compromise between a readability that is based on iconicity, so uh, to to make uh, a font that is maybe a little bit easier to learn, and on the other hand, readability based on training uh, to make a font that can also be read very well by by experienced readers like you all, because uh, for you as a trained reader, it is very strange if you just uh, suddenly change uh, the symbol. It, it's not that. I'm curious to see how we see full documents in it. Ah, OK, yeah. Because there are real reasons why we went to the side view, just so you know. <laughs> because some, some signs just couldn't be written with the symbol that you have. We ah. did have we did have dots. Oh, I did. I had dots on everything, and ah. I even went through the sign writing list in great detail. I can put a dot here, everybody. You want me to put it on? No, we can't see the finger going into the mouth and inside the lips. Um, ah. So you could only see it coming towards you. You couldn't see it going inside here. You know, um, so we had to show the spoke. Yeah. So we can see it going somewhere. I'm just telling you that this went through years of development, 40 years. <laughs> yes, that's pretty interesting for us. Yeah, of and course. I'm, very in, I'm interested to see how this goes on. Please go ahead. It's beautiful. Please know. I think this is gorgeous work. And yeah. I just wanted to break in to say that in the English language, we have a term called typography. Do you have a term like that in German? Typography. It, it's a little bit different than a font like just... Um, that, like the true type fonts that Steve developed where we're just able to function in a computer. It's a little bit more like designing the beauty of the way the symbols look and making them change depending on like Helvetica, a typeface we would call that. So yeah. you're, you're developing another typeface, isn't that correct? Yeah. Is that that's what, that's what this is. Yeah. Very good. It's great. <laughs> we call that typography. That's actually a profession. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for, for us, um, it's 
it's basically the same, I think. Like typeface and font, I, I thought there were synonyms. I'm not sure if that's correct. Not really, no. Okay. Not completely, it's so confusing you have no idea, but this is an excellent presentation. Don't let me interrupt you too much because it's a lot of fun. So please continue, and then we can always talk later. <laughs> okay. okay. So, yeah. So, okay, here again an uh, overview uh, over the symbols. Uh -huh. um, this is actually uh, the end of our presentation. No, the overview of the symbols. Because, uh, we oh, wow, here we go. <laughs> with, uh, with like all the symbols we did now with all the different rotations. Uh -huh. So this is the work, the complete work we have done. And uh, yeah, the next step would be maybe to start with the mimic symbols or to go on with the movement symbols, we will see, or to, to further test it and maybe to get your feedback and uh, then go on with yes. it. Yeah, but like this, um, like 60 hands with all the like okay. rotations and everything, like allowed us to build that grid and this grid is basically like the heart from what we did because with this grid you would be able to build like a lot more hands without having to think about all these rules because you always have, have a grid for every finger, for every um, stroke thickness. So it's very easy for us now to think of other hand forms. I see. Excellent. So, yeah. so that was basically the, the main work, the main work yeah. of our yeah, design process to to build that grid, yeah. Very that, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it. That was. No, that. wait. Can, can, can you go back to that screen? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I, I want to thank you first of all. Please know that I'm delighted. I hope you don't mind that I jump right in here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> because, because I love this. And just so you know, I've worked for so many years on these symbols. They have been a part of my life now since 1974. Um, let me tell you an example of why the thumb in some of your squares with the thumb to the side would be misread. Oh, here I thought I had uh, turned off my phone, and I guess I didn't. Isn't that terrible? Somebody picked it up, I hope. <laughs> okay, let me explain. Um, are, do you have any rotations of these symbols? Can you see a rotated version of... Um, one of the one the, the white you know down at the bottom of this um, beautiful slide over to the right at the bottom you've got three squares that are for the thumb sticking out I believe one is here one must be here and one must be there mm -hmm. isn't that right okay so let's take the white one um, the white one that's where the palm is facing us and can you rotate it for a minute are you able to rotate it within your font uh, um I'm not sure if we can do it in the presentation. Actually. Oh, that's okay. So I'll, I'll just explain to you what, what's getting, what's happening. Yeah. I, I used to do the hand like that. I wanted to explain this. This is an important history lesson of the developments of the symbols. It, it gets so frustrating. When you have a, see the white square represents facing your body, and then you've got the line for the thumb. If yeah. you now turn it like this, so that the symbol now has the, the yeah. line, line up at the top, it looks so oh, much I like the, 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 this hand. I'm uh, sorry, what did you say? I, I, think I know what you mean. It looks like the, the hand with the index finger pointing out. Yes, and so we used to do documents where we would test it out, really, with people reading. And we found out that if we put the thumb for the A hand, which is what we call it, in um, American Sign Language finger spelling, that happens to be the letter A in American Sign Language, or you could call it the, the square with the thumb out, <laughs> whatever. Um, it um, looked so much like an index finger that we had no choice but to put the thumb into the middle of the square, because if we didn't, then people thought it was an index finger. So the one thing you need to do, and because index is used so much, it's for pointing and this. It has so much meaning involved when you're reading and writing real documents. First of all, your, the symbols for the index finger need to be longer. The line has to be longer for this finger than with this finger. Now, everyone, don't be upset. In the United States, this means something bad. But in Hong Kong Sign Language, it means something else. It doesn't matter. It's not necessarily a bad symbol. But there are times when we need to be able to know the difference between the middle finger 
and the index. Yeah. And even, even though it's true that you do have a place for them in your exact square, there are times when people can misread it if there isn't a different length for each finger. Yeah. And like, let me give you another example. The baby finger. You have an eye hand shape here somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, good. You did that on an angle. Yeah, Interesting. We did that exactly, yeah. Because you, of yeah, you accepted that. I appreciate it because what happened in my old days, we had it completely straight up and down just like the yeah. index finger. And you can imagine what happened. Everybody misread it. So yeah. we had to go, whoops, at an angle, ouch. Most people don't even look like that when they do the eye hand or this finger out. But we had to do it, or otherwise they misread it with the index. Yeah, we ran into the same problem. And this is, of course, where, where always Stefan Wehrmann helped us a lot. Because <laughs> yes, I bet you've heard <laughs> an earful. <laughs> the history that, that, that you went through. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and also thumbs, oh my goodness. When it comes to the, the thumbs, everybody has a, um, a history about the feelings, the way they feel about thumbs. <laughs> I thought that was very funny when I first started. I couldn't believe everybody had so many emotional feelings connected to thumbs, but they do. Uh, <laughs> and our hand symbols have been, been greatly uh, criticized for the unusual, irregular kind of thumbs that we have. And some of them are at an angle, and some of them are a little straighter, and some of them are from a different part of the square or the, yeah. the, rect the rectangle. And it all came about because then people wouldn't confuse that symbol with another one. It, wow. had, to, it had to do with fast reading so that people wouldn't get confused. Yeah. You see, there's so many hand shapes. And, yeah. of course, in your case, you're dealing with, what, around 60. Or yeah. so that, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. It's a it's a great way to standardize. But I do think that the last three will definitely be misread with the first three. Yeah. Um, it, it, the moment the moment they're rotated. How do you feel about that, Adam? We we hoped. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, Adam. Sorry. Yeah, I, it, I I was noticing the same thing that the if you rotate it like that, it would look just like the one hand shape. I was noticing the same thing. Okay. Yeah, and, and it depends on the sign language, you see, because not everybody um, is working with the same sign language, and some hand shapes are much more uh, used in some sign languages than others, and it's very confusing for you, I'm sure, at the Delix team and at your, uh, in your typography design to find those hand shapes that are important for your sign language. That's actually very important linguistic work that you just did, because... <laughs> um, we have actually been struggling with that um, out of courtesy to all the beautiful people who have written to me over so many years I kept adding hand symbols <laughs> and when I first started out we only had around 80 I think something like that in the sign writer DOS computer program, program. and then and later, then later I, I hear I some hear sound some feedback sound. should I do something? Okay good uh, so Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And then from from that experience, uh, one day I got this fabulous contact from Spain, and they said, Valerie, we need you to add in SignWriter DAW software all these uh, hands with the thumb going straight forward, which you have with the dots. And that's how we started using the dots, and I added those for the Parkers who um, were in Spain. And then those got added to a whole general set, and then we started working on the web, and all of a sudden I had the ability to be able to add a lot more hand symbols because we had more memory involved with software that's on the web. So to explain all of these things that happened in our rules came about through kind of experience. It wasn't built upon a complete logic from the beginning. It wasn't like I knew in advance exactly what everybody was going to think and need. I, it came through 40 years of experience. It doesn't mean that we're stuck where we are. I like what you've done. It's beautiful. And it's exciting, too. And I have definitely seen deaf people and hearing people both write in the style that you have. And it still is sign writing, because even though there are some variations that are different, we can see it's the same rules and the same symbols. Um, I'm sure you know what the differences are, but I just wanted to make one last comment and then I will not talk so much. <laughs> and that is the fact that the dots are very useful whenever they're coming towards us or away from us. 
Yeah. Um, did you know that I developed a way to write dance first? I actually, as I was telling you earlier in the break, I actually wrote some dances in Hamburg uh, for John Neumeier <laughs> in his ballet. So I, I was a person who wrote body movement. And in our dance writing system, uh, we actually have a dot for when an arm is coming straight at you. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's coming this way, we can use a dot or sometimes even a line. It's a long story. But the point is, things projecting were dots. So then when we started doing sign writing, we do have a bunch of symbols with dots. No question about it. And why did I do that? Because there were times when there were so many symbols, we didn't want them to be conflicted with others. We wanted to make sure that people could read the difference between this and this. And mm -hmm. so you, ha you have that in there, and that's perfect. But there's one problem. Sometimes when this, these symbols with the thumb going forward, or any other finger going forward, sometimes those dots are only perfect when you're facing straight out or straight to you. And the moment you get side, the reason we then show the whole fingers is that we have contact with our face. Yeah. How do you show that with just the dot? I'd like to know because I tried before and I, I didn't succeed. <laughs> Go yes. ahead, I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> so that's actually actually true. Uh, the version we showed before, the, the hand with the middle finger pointing towards you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, in German sign language, it's from the sign internet. I think it's, an, it's actually an American sign, isn't it? Probably. What, what is the American sign, Adam, for internet? Can you show your side? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's, it's the middle thing is touching. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and it has to do with contact. Exactly. Um, and that's that, is, that is that's actually a, a case where our our symbol is not so uh, iconic because when you put uh, the, the two symbols next to each other, the fingers aren't really touching. So you have to to understand that uh, in a different way. That's true. So um but um, I think it's uh, very uh, 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 nice that you mentioned, like, the, 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 you call it a hand, right? We did in our language. In American Sign Language, it just happens to be an a hand. It doesn't necessarily mean that's true in German Sign Language. I don't know. But, in yes. German, in German, it's not uh, the, the... It's there. Yeah. So we would have a difference. That's why we had two hand shapes. We had one out and one up here on the side. Do you yeah. have that? No. Yeah. No, we don't have that one. We only have the one uh, with the uh, finger in front, or the thumb in front. Yeah, exactly that one. Yes. So how would how would you write finger spelling? Won't you need the the side then? Uh, it's not in this symbols because um, when we made the selection, we went to sign puddle and looked through the dictionary, the German dictionary, and looked uh, which symbols are used the most. And yes. this A hand. Is, of course, it's an important letter for spelling, but it's not in so many other signs in German sign language. So that's probably why it's not in the selection. But we had to start at a certain point, and um, that would be one of the next symbols uh, to do. Yes. Well, uh, my immediate reaction is that your squares need to be a little smaller so that you can have more of a longer index finger without you losing the look of the square. Because we need, to, we need to see the difference in length between the index and the thumb. That's just my, I'm just telling you through my experience of reading. Yeah, actually that was one thing, um, I wasn't, uh, because um, that was one thing we actually thought about, and we made the thumb a lot shorter than the index finger, and we thought, like, because we were not that experienced, that this should be enough to distinguish these two symbols from each other. And, but we thought about it, and we, uh, we made it a lot smaller. So if you would see them next to each other, you probably need to see that it's different, that one is the thumb and one is the index finger. But I can see that if they are separated from each other, then it's maybe hard to see. And um, like the little finger you mentioned, like we did it like in the diagonal like direction, because yeah. in this case, we thought, yeah, OK, we have the same length, so we have to do something else about to <laughs> it to be dis distinguished. And for the thumb, we thought like the short thumb would be enough, but maybe it's not. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'll tell you exactly what happened to me. I did that too. See, you're, essentially, you're relearning everything that I went through. 
And so when you take a look at what we're doing right now, for example, talking about true type, um, you know that Steve Slavinsky also developed a totally different kind of true type that has nothing to do with typography, where you're changing the feel and look of the symbols. But instead, he's just took what we already have and put it together with all the other symbols. Like how many symbols? 38,000 and something, everything and put it all together into one great big sign writing true type font that can be used on the web to type with. So we're actually typing with true type now, which we never could do before. So thank you, Steve. But what you're doing is what I would call typography, which is changing or you know the look of the symbols, but still making them enough like the symbols we use at the moment that we can still understand it. And it will be beautiful and pretty and perhaps even more standard. And that's a good thing. But let me tell you what I, what I went through so you know. The reason we don't have the thumb from the bottom of the square is because it was misread with the index finger so many times. It didn't matter what the length of that thumb is. You could make it almost a dot, and they'd still read it as an index finger. So <laughs> if you put the thumb line in the center of the square to the side like we have been trying to do, although it is true that we are inconsistent only because the symbols were building like little bricks over 40 years and people got used to one of them sort of at an angle and the other one a little bit over here. But if we were to redesign what we did 100%, I would get all the lines in the center of the square. So if you had the A, the line for the thumb would be in the center of the square. Then it can't be confused with the index. Now, there's one point here. Of course it could be confused with this yeah. Because then it would turn. But the difference there is this is not used. God, that looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad in American sign language. Um, that, that finger position is not as used as much, thank goodness, uh, as the index. The yeah. index is the most used out of all the hand shapes, um, really truly, because we use it for pointing. It's it's yeah, of course, yeah. even an international sign language. Yeah, yeah, it's quite an international experience. So, um, so I realized that totally. Um, it's just my my experience. It doesn't mean that you have to change anything. And I want you to know that I'm grateful to you. I think you're a wonderful team of people, and you've mm -hmm. done such beautiful work. And you're working hard. And you're contributing. You're contributing all kinds of ideas, and that's very, very important. So I don't want you to stop one minute. I'm just trying to explain some of the issues that came into um, my world for so many years. And another example um, that you probably know, if you've noticed, we had kind of a, a, a rectangle for the flat hand. It was yeah. a little skinnier, yeah. or what, what you call a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what did I want to tell you? Oh, um, the, the different shape of the, the five hand. Yeah. Um, the reason that we just, for your own information, not that you probably really want to change it any, but uh, the reason that we took the five fingers from the the rectangle that creates the flat hand is that in sign language, oftentimes people would go like this and then spread their fingers. So they're already they're already in the flat hand, oh, and, yeah. and so to them it was like going from a flat hand to the open of the flat hand. It, oh, I see, yeah. it, it's like an open flat hand is what it's like, at least as far as I could tell from the way people were reading it. Now, I may have misread it and maybe people will disagree with me. It would be very interesting to get statistics on how people read the symbols. That would be very good. That would be a good project. <laughs> so, yeah, that's interesting. So in that case, if you start with that hand in a movement and then open it, uh, the way in the original script uh, the symbol looks, it is more a more fluent uh, change because uh, the the both uh, both symbols look the same. On the other hand, we thought that uh, if you start with a fist and then point out one finger after the other, then suddenly if you take out the fifth finger then the symbol changes a lot, which was for us a bit strange. So well, ye yes, except how do you define the square? Why do you have a square at all? Yeah, for In other us, words, yeah. yeah, go ahead. You see, for us, a square represented at least one, set, one, one finger down, at least. Yeah, I know. It's like, I know, and you probably don't care about that rule, and that's okay. 
But this five hand didn't have any fingers down. So yeah, we had our reasons for why we did things. Mm -hmm. um, so those those uh, rules aren't there now, but that's okay because I can read it. I can certainly read this one. I'm just concerned about the thumbs. I think they need to be in the middle of the square. That's just my my uh, suggestion for reading. Okay. And uh, the, the dots, oh, there are about 12 others that we could do with dots. Let me tell you about this one. I noticed you did the side view on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you never consider doing a great big thick dot? Yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Um, oh, about 10 years ago, you can find the, the messages on the sign writing list. <laughs> I showed everybody, you know, kind of a base hand and then a great big thick dot right here, you know, uh, with all the fingers. Yeah, okay. and, and they said, no, they didn't like it. And those side view hands that then become white palm or dark palm, depending on the palm facing, has created all kinds of turmoil and confusion. But when you hand somebody reading a document, they read it. And if they don't analyze it, they see the hand shape in the side view, and they look at the white palm and say, OK, so it's white, and it's facing me. And whether it's going this way or that way, doesn't matter. I see the hand shape. I see the palm facing. In general, now I know what the sign is, because they've memorized what the sign is written for. So here's my question. Do you have any documents written with this lovely font? And it is beautiful. Uh, we we actually have a um, we did a publication, but only in German. Well, that's okay. We can we'll survive. <laughs> um, and I would like to see it, and of course, I know our time is actually almost up. Can you imagine that? But actually, we have an intermission, and if you wanted to go longer, I'm perfectly happy. Do you have a document that you can show us, or is that for another presentation? We 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 could no. I, I think it would be uh, it would be uh, only too less time to show it now. But okay. what we could do is maybe to send it to you the the PDF file uh, okay. after the presentation, yeah. so you can take a look there and see all the symbols more more in. Yeah. Uh, yes. What was I was uh, going to say? That you always said like we don't want to change it back again, or we we change the rules or anything. But actually, like I am, or we are very, very thankful for any feedback yeah. because <laughs> we talk about all the time. And sometimes it just goes around in circles because <laughs> it's, for yes, it's for us. It's only like aesthetical reasons and um, all the the functional meanings and everything we can't really define. So we are very thankful for opportunities like that yeah. to rethink and to yeah, yeah argue about. Um, our decisions. That's yeah. really it means a lot to us. <laughs> yeah, so that, I can say so too. It's because you you are probably uh, the person with the most experience in that. Of yeah, course, we, we talked to the Delex team and to Stefan Bremer and got a lot of useful feedback there. But now again, it is so much uh, more interesting to. Yeah. To, to hear what your experiences were when you designed the project. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure for me to work with you, too. I, You know, you're right about how older people have trouble learning to read um, a change in their writing system. And yeah. actually, I'm rather impressed with, with the German culture. I remember, if you go back in time and you look at the old German texts, boy, you had different symbols in there, didn't you? You had a... Very complex, beautiful things, and um, I just am amazed at how you have adapted your your written literature in Germany to a modern day kind of phonetic spelling that's phenomenal, and that you were able to make that kind of adjustment, and somehow your whole culture was able to accept the fact that you were writing differently than you did 300, 400 years ago, and so it is with written sign languages. We are trying very hard to bring a foundation for the world, giving them basic symbols, and everybody has all kinds of projects. It is bound to happen that there will be different typography or typographical design fonts for sign writing. That's a good thing. And you are blessing us, really truly helping us by doing this. And the one thing is it is good that we test some documents because what might be very readable when, for example, your um, I think his name was TiVo, and I think TiVo mentioned that maybe some symbols weren't that easy to read. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you start actually reading documents and sit down and read it like a newspaper, believe it or not, 
if you know sign writing and you have the spellings memorized, because just like we have our own spellings memorized when we read and write spoken language, after a while it doesn't even matter whether the symbols are here or there. People do read it. The problem right now in our history is that we're picking at one symbol, just like you showed the letter A in the Latin or the Roman alphabet, and how funny it looked with the different looks. Maybe yeah. that, that might be hard to read for somebody who might be new to that alphabet, right? And yet, for us, because we know that alphabet, we probably would say, ah, that's an A, no problem, right? <laughs> Exactly, but if you wrote a whole newspaper with a squashed A like you showed in one of those funny pictures, oh, yeah. that would get harder, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what, I, what I'm trying to get at is that you're doing a beautiful design based on beauty, and you've done that. And now I would like to start writing with it a little bit and yeah. seeing, if we, see, seeing if it's really readable. And if it's not, I, I'm grateful if you're open to that feedback. And we'll find a way, you'll see. And those dots, you were you were in keeping with the with the you know the rules of the system as far as projection goes. Yeah. And the only problem is we had to make exceptions because we're dealing with very unusual languages. <laughs> I just want to say when you mentioned you want to start writing with it to, to test it, um, Delex was already um, integrating our symbols in the editor. So oh. you can now choose um, not not yet. But <laughs> sorry, but, uh, because we, of course, we only started with these symbols. Yeah, but I think to, to, to make a real good comparison, you need more symbols, like also mm -hmm. the, and the, the movements. But we are uh, right now in the process to get the symbols into the, the Delex software so that you can see them in the context of, of the sign and uh, compare them inside the text. So to make uh, the, exactly this test that you've been yeah. talking about. Yes, exactly. So that's good to know. So I know now that later on when you feel ready, I could go to the Delex program and go to the editor part of your Delex program and I could, uh, we can choose between the standard way that we're writing right now and also the symbols that you have created in your font. Is that right? Exactly. We hope that. Uh, yeah. so okay. Okay. No problem. It will come sometime in the future. Oh, well, that's a, that's a blessing. Thank you very much. And there are some people who make their living at designing typographical, you know, different kinds of fonts, you know, Helvetica and all the different fonts that we have within the English ASCII. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, do that too, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there may be a, yes, go ahead. We are designers in typography. We exactly. Typography. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> exactly. So, from this experience working with typographers, I'm honored. I want you to know, it will be it will be a lot of fun to see if we can find a balance between creating yeah. a, a standardized uh, typography, but also have it so we can truly read the documents. And those two. Balances will come. And I just got a lovely message from Stefan Borman. And he says his respect and his hello and is so excited to work with you. And he said this was a great presentation. <laughs> so, okay, well, I want to thank you so much. I hope that we will be more in touch and that we will continue to work together, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and thank you very much. Do you want to say anything more before we say goodbye? We are happy to hear all kind of um, feedbacks, not just only from you, also from everyone that is that maybe has started with the font, uh, with the sign writing language. So we are very thankful for every feedback, and this is the kind of process we are going to in we are going to go in now. <laughs> yes, I, I predict this will. Yeah. Go everyone ahead. who listen, feel free to to, to write us yeah, and yeah. Uh, say. We will. And, and as you know, everybody who's watching, this is presentation number 51. On the presentation web pages, you go to signwriting.org forward slash symposium forward slash presentation 0051. And you will find information about the new sign type um, font for sign writing. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you. Bravo! <laughs> 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 That was a perfect ending to a perfect day. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. We're going to have a little break now for the next half an hour. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> See you.